When the pandemic first hit and we were stuck with wrestling with no crowds, I remember thinking by like the third week that I couldn't wait until this was all over. I couldn't wait to go back to normalcy. I was sick of it pretty early on, especially because AEW had such a great start to 2020. And by the beginning of March, we were robbed of what was going to be most likely a banner year for All Elite Wrestling. For nearly 16 consecutive months, we saw AEW run all our shows in one single venue. That venue being Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. And while the thought of being stuck in one place isn't ideal, we came to grow with this place. We came to call it home. When we were all stuck at home, we turned on our TVs every Wednesday to tune into AEW Dynamite at Daily's Place. And it helped us keep our minds off all the craziness that was the year 2020. And in this video, I'd like to take a brief moment of your time to look back at the past 16 months and what AEW did to provide us with entertainment. This is Tranquilo Club, and this is a bittersweet farewell to AEW in Daly's place. Since Cody Rhodes opening promo on the very first pandemic episode of AEW Dynamite, we as viewers didn't know what to expect when we tuned in. It was a crazy time in all of our lives. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know how to react. So to tune in to wrestling once again on a Wednesday night felt at least a little normal. Because if you recall, all sports came to an immediate stop, except for pro wrestling. Pro wrestling was the one exception. They kept going. But the only catch was they would have to run their shows without any fans. And wrestling with no fans is, well, bizarre. And that goes for any form of entertainment or sport that relies on their audience to elevate the experience. Now that there were no fans, well, it was just not something we were used to. But AEW somehow found a way to make it work. They turned the hard cam to face the stage so you wouldn't have to see that there was no crowd. In addition to that, they were the first ones who put wrestlers at ringside to emulate crowd noise. They had heels on one side and faces on one side. And let me tell you, it was way better than watching wrestling in an empty arena with no noise whatsoever. AEW was thinking outside of the box to ensure that their product was tolerable during a global pandemic. And that was just presentation wise. Content wise, while it wasn't as enjoyable as watching a normal episode of Dynamite before the pandemic, the shows were still unique enough and entertaining enough compared to other wrestling shows running during the pandemic. Simply put, these shows still had the AEW charm. So what is the AEW charm? Well, to me, it's unpredictability and variety. And from the very first pandemic episode, that's exactly what AEW gave us. This was the episode where both Matt Hardy and Mr. Brody Lee debuted it. While other promotions running during the pandemic were just kind of turning their wheels and throwing out filler, AEW made it clear from episode one of the pandemic that these shows would still be AEW, where anything can happen. And they stuck to that mantra and never once looked back. I mean, just think of all the classic moments that AEW gave us over the past 14 plus months in Daly's place. There's just too many to name. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of the top top moments that AEW provided us in Daly's place over the past year. For example, there were a lot of top surprise debuts during the pandemic era, all across the board, like FTR, Thunder Rosa, Matt Hardy and Brody Lee on the same night as previously mentioned, and then my favorite surprise debut of the pandemic era, the debut of Sting. Sting's debut on the December special episode of Dynamite Winter is Coming is still one of the coolest, most shocking moments that has happened in AEW history if you ask me. The arrival of such a huge legend like Sting during a pandemic just showed you that AEW were taking this seriously. It didn't matter if there were fans or no fans, they were going balls to the wall with their shows. And I know I just referred to Sting's debut as my favorite surprise debut, but there was another surprise that I considered even better. It was a certain moment where I realized that AEW were not holding back despite being in a global pandemic, and that was when Kenta arrived in AEW. Or in other words, when the Forbidden Door was finally opened and New Japan crossed over with AEW. To me, this was a huge, massive deal because this is something that we wanted when AEW was founded. We wanted AEW and New Japan to have a working relationship to get all those dream matches. But when AEW was founded, it just wasn't meant to be at that time. We had 
had to wait two long years for the forbidden door to finally be knocked open, and it happened during the pandemic at Daly's place, and it's a moment I will never forget. Now those were the surprises, but we also had a lot, a lot of amazing matches during the pandemic era. I'm just gonna name a few of them off the top of my head, I apologize ahead of time if I leave your favorite out. There was the Young Bucks versus FTR for the AEW Tag Team titles, finally the Tag Team Dream Match we had wanted for years, and it happened during the pandemic at Daly's place, and they more than delivered. And then there was Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker in a lights out match, and this was one of the best women's matches I've seen in a very, very long time, at least in North America. It was arguable that Britt Baker was already a star, but this was the match that catapulted her into superstardom and began her push for the AEW women's title. Another great women's match that happened during this era was Tai Conti versus Hikaru Shida for the AEW women's title, and I really wanted to make sure I mentioned this match because it was just excellent. This was at a moment where Shida's title reign had finally kicked into high gear and she had the perfect opponent in the likable Tai Conti. And again, this was another case of the person who lost the match coming out looking like a star. Tai Conti looked like a freaking superstar in the making in this match. And last but certainly not least is a match I absolutely have to mention. Cody Rhodes versus Brody Lee for the TNT title on a special Saturday edition of Dynamite. This match falls under the great match and shocking moment column. This was at a time where Cody was facing different people every week because he had a TNT open challenge and Brody Lee decided to call him out the week prior. And what we got is something that I don't think anyone expected. Brody Lee absolutely squashed Cody Rhodes and won the TNT title in shocking and dominant fashion. And of course the epic beatdown afterwards and then Dark Order all posing together on the ramp was such a sick visual. This was such an epic moment. Brody Lee squashing the poster boy of AEW in Cody Rhodes is a moment I'm so glad he got for his career. Honorable mention to the dog collar match between these two which was also very very good. And of course, while we're talking about the great Brody Lee, comes the hardest topic that we experienced as a wrestling community during the pandemic era. Brody Lee tragically passed away on December 26th, 2020, and it was one of the saddest moments I could recall in all my days of being a wrestling fan. On the following Dynamite, AEW held a special Brody Lee Celebration of Life tribute episode, and it was without a doubt the most emotional I've ever been watching a wrestling show. It was just very beautifully done for Brody Lee's family, friends, and fans. Without a doubt, just the most emotional thing out of the entire pandemic era for the wrestling industry. A great show for a very, very great man. AEW at Daily's Place could have just been filler episode after filler episode, but that wouldn't have been sustainable. It's like I said earlier, AEW was forced to think outside of the box to make their product stand out. It's the reason why we got matches like the Stadium Stampede match which turned out to be an absolute classic, and why we also got the Mimosa Mayhem match which I personally didn't like, but hey, they tried something new. Instead of holding off on feuds like Young Bucks vs FTR, AEW decided to go for it, and they still gave us a classic match despite it not happening in a full packed arena. I mean hell, the story of Hangman Page and Kenny Omega for the most part has happened during the pandemic, and that's arguably one of the best wrestling stories going on in any promotion today. And also think about how many people AEW signed during the pandemic era, Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, Red Velvet, Jade Cargill, and Eddie Kingston who has become a major player with AEW in the short amount of time he's been there. It's kind of crazy, but I can't can't really imagine AEW without those people now, and they were all people who were brought in during the pandemic. Anna Jay and Ty Conti also come to mind as people who might have not gotten a chance if it weren't for the pandemic. If you recall, last summer AEW were short on female competitors because of what was going on, so they brought in a bunch of women to see who would be able to stick around, and they found two gems in Anna Jay and Ty Conti. AEW is in a much different spot now than it was pre-pandemic. The roster is bigger. They're gonna have another show besides Dynamite in Rampage, but more importantly, since they're such a young company, they still have a lot left to prove now that everything's going back to normal. And I don't mean that in the way that they haven't already proved themselves. What I mean is they know what they're capable of as a company. Revolution 2020 was arguably their creative height and financial height. And now what they should be aiming at is to exceed that bar they set. 
and with a bigger roster and an additional TV show, they should be able to do it. And you know why? Because they've been at Daily's place for over 14 months now. They're hungry. They want to go back to that level they set before the world shut down. But before we get back to normal, we must all bid farewell to Daily's place. The venue that we all became accustomed to when we were all going through a tough time in our lives. All Elite Wrestling in Daily's place provided us with moments that reminded us why we love professional wrestling. From triumph to heartbreak to surprise debuts to surprise results to classic matches to classic segments to star making performances to moments only possible in Daily's place. Remember what I said at the start of the video? By like three weeks in, I couldn't wait for AEW to leave Daily's place. But now that at last they're finally leaving, I can't help but feel bittersweet about it. I mean, to put it in perspective, for as long as I've been making these video essays on AEW, they've been stuck at Daily's place. Hell, the whole reason why I started making these types of videos was because I was stuck at home during the pandemic. But look at my channel and look at all the content that AEW gave me to talk about during the pandemic. They did not hold back. So many classic moments, so many classic matches. I never would have thought in a million years that New Japan would have arrived in AEW when the world was shut down, but it happened. Here's my final thoughts. I think that Daily's Place will go down not as an iconic AEW venue, but as an iconic wrestling venue. It's up there with Currican Hall, with ECW Arena, Hammerstein Ballroom, MSG, you name it. This venue has truly become AEW's home, and I know they called it their home before, but now there's no denying it. All Elite Wrestling went through some of their toughest times, I'm sure, in this venue during the global pandemic when they probably weren't sure what they were gonna do. They weren't sure maybe that they were even gonna survive, who knows? But they prevailed and they went from probably having their toughest times there to having some of their best moments in company history in that very venue. We as fans saw this company grow and Front of our very eyes in such a small venue and now they're gonna go back on the road but let's not forget what they did for us to keep us entertained every single week who knows what aew would have looked like if this global pandemic never hit would we still have seen the same faces join that's something we'll never know but it happened and we can't ever change that and let's just say that aew provided us with some very very solid entertainment for over the past year and a half it's a bittersweet goodbye due to all the moments and memories created and it's certainly an era in my wrestling fandom that i will never forget thank you all elite wrestling thank you jacksonville florida thank you daily's place and i must bid you adieu